Good afternoon, everyone. Our community now enters a new phase of this pandemic, a phase that hopefully reduces the number of people who are infected. Yeah, Mecklenburg County went into a stay at home order at 8 o'clock this morning and Cabarrus County will follow suit at 5 tonight. That's after two deaths from COVID-19. And this is where we stand right now. Take a look at this map. These new numbers came out in just the last 90 minutes. North Carolina went from 504 confirmed cases last night to now 636. Cabarrus County is reporting three new cases, now up to 21. There are 170 cases in Mecklenburg County. South Carolina will release an update later this afternoon, but for now it's reporting 424 confirmed cases. We know seven people there have died. All right, let's break this all down. So here's what you need to know. If you live in Mecklenburg County, you must now stay in your home, avoid unnecessary travel and visits, and you can still leave your home to get food, get medicine, or to get some exercise outside just as long as you maintain that social distance of six feet or more from other people. Now, there are several other exceptions for essential reasons. Now, this order is historic, limiting travel to just essential business only. Yeah, and that word essential is being used a lot. So we want to make sure you know what it actually means. Eyewitness News reporter Gina Esposito is breaking down these restrictions. Now we are now under that stay at home order here in Mecklenburg County. We're standing in the Cotswold Shopping Center here just in front of the Harris Teeter. Grocery stores will remain open this morning. We saw a lot of people rushing to this store here to make that last minute trip. Here's a list of some of the essential businesses that will not be closing, like grocery stores, pharmacies, medical offices, laundromats, banks, and restaurants for delivery and takeout only. While those are places you can go, here are some things you can't do. You can't visit a friend or go on non-essential travel. You can't go into work for a non-essential business. City leaders hope the stay-at-home order will flatten the curve and bring us back to normal sooner rather than later. Hospital capacity is why Mayor Vi Lyle says the stay at home order is so important. To be able to cope with something that's unknown, that's transmitted by from from within each other, it's just been very, very hard. No one's hospitals in the world, uh, but especially ours as well, are prepared for the level of volume when we hit a certain point of COVID-19 cases. If you work for a non-essential business, you can't go into work. And this also applies to people who live outside of Mecklenburg County, but work here in the county. Now, if your business is asking for you to go into work and you believe that it is not essential, you are asked to call 311. Back to you. Cabarrus County also starts their stay at home order today, but that doesn't start until five o'clock. This comes after the county reported the state's first two coronavirus related deaths and a handful of new cases. The health department says a man in his late 70s died. He did have underlying medical conditions. The second person was someone traveling through Cabarrus County from Virginia. Now again, you can go outside to take a walk or maybe go for a run. In fact, that's really encouraged. That's right, but the places you'll be able to do that is getting limited. Crowder's Mountain was so crowded, it actually had to be closed. Let's bring in meteorologist Keith Monday is live to explain how greenways are trying to keep that. Well, this is John Aaron's rather, John. Let's try to let's talk to John about how we're trying to keep all that from happening, John. Yeah, that's right, Damani. You, know, you got to get outside. These greenways are, have the chance, at least, especially once the sun comes up and really gets going the next couple of days, for these to pile up rather quickly. So we decided to take a walk with you here. My photographer and Josh Stenner and I, we've got a, with this mic cord, is the respectful social distance here. We're over at Catawba Creek here in Gastonia. I was talking to folks over at Gaston County Parks and Rec. They don't want what happened at Crowder's to happen here, so they're asking folks keep a safe social distance between you and your fellow walker or jogger. They're going to be out and about, you know, some of the dog parks around town, those are all going to be sanitized, but if they see groups of 10 or large groups, they're going to make a move. They're going to make some restrictions. You know, one of the best reasons to live in Charlotte and this area is all of our greenways. Well, in this kind of environment, it's going to be very tempting for those greenways to really pile up. So we're going to go around. We're going to go over to the Ann Springs Close Greenway in Fort Mill. We're going to talk to them in a little bit, see how they're going to handle some of the extra people coming in and just making sure that we're keeping that safe social distance. Guys? And it's going to be important to keep that safe social distance over these next couple of days when the weather is just going to be beautiful out there. John, thanks so much for that report. 
Well, this is a historic number. Nearly 3.3 million Americans have now filed for unemployment. And this just illustrates the devastating effect the coronavirus is having on people's lives and the economy. As Jacqueline Fell shows us, today's numbers quadruple the previous record from 1982. Sobering statistics coming from the U.S. Labor Department today. Nearly 3.3 million Americans applied for unemployment benefits last week. That's more than quadruple the previous record set in 1982, and it's all stemming from a widespread economic shutdown caused by the coronavirus. Even with the Senate passing a $2 trillion rescue package, layoffs are likely to go up again as the U.S. economy sinks into a recession. Restaurants, hotels, movie theaters, gyms, and even airlines have all watched revenues take a nosedive. Countless employers face loan payments and other fixed costs, so they're cutting jobs in hopes of saving money. Some economists say the nation's unemployment rate could approach 13 percent by May. To put that into perspective and give a little comparison, the highest jobless rate during the Great Depression, which ended back in 2009, was 10 percent. I'm Jacqueline Fell reporting for our Washington News Bureau. Well, we're going to continue to keep an eye on this. In fact, we're going to take a live look right now at Wall Street. The Dow on the positive side, despite those unemployment numbers, uh, it is continuing to trend up. So again, we're going to keep looking at this throughout the day and bring you the latest. Well, a food bank in Caldwell County has helped an extra 150 families over the past two weeks. But now, unfortunately, it's running critically low on supplies. Channel 9 State Faraday is live at South Caldwell Christian Ministries with how they're trying to meet demand that have, as donations just slowly dwindle. Yeah, Delamani, the uh, ministries here in, at South Caldwell, they rely on donations from about two dozen churches here in Caldwell County. But with places of worship now closed, those donations are obviously down. Take a look at some of this video that was shot this morning. Workers showed us some of the empty shells normally stocked here at South Caldwell Christian Ministries. Each month, they typically help about 400 families in the area, but they're, now they're seeing an additional 150 people come in each week in an effort to help as many people as they can. They have now limited the amount of food a family can get for a two week period, reducing it by 15 pounds. They're also being very careful about who was allowed in the food bank, putting up warning signs at all the entrances. We are running low. Um, if, if donations still don't continue to come in, um, we, we will probably be out of food within maybe like another like week and a half or something. And the food bank is telling me they need canned meat, canned vegetables, canned fruit. If you look behind me off there in the distance, they do have a drop box area for anyone wanting to uh, donate food here in South Caldwell County. I'm reporting live from Granite Falls. Now back to you. All right, Dave, thank you. Well, there's so much uncertainty surrounding your child's school right now. You're probably wondering when will they get back in the classroom and what does this mean for your summer plans? A lot of questions out there and we could get an answer to those questions today when the General Assembly's Education Group meets in less than an hour. Now the big conversation they are having is whether they need to extend the school year. WFAA radio reports that Union County Representative Craig Horn says lawmakers could add two weeks to the school year. Now another option, cutting summer break short and starting earlier in the fall to assess where children are academically. 